He had uh, two of them, that is body 118 and 125, had positive findings, while the other two, body 117 and 126, had negative findings. I have already indicated uh, their national identity cards. He produced his the expedit, he has expedit 19. BW12 is Dr. Edwin Walong, who is a pathologist at the University of Nairobi Department of Human Pathology. He was among a team of 12 pathologists who performed autopsies of the victims of the attack. A total of 145 autopsies, he said, were carried out, and he produced a list which showed a list of them as well as each individual report for each of these victims. The list contains the names of the deceased persons and a summary of the injuries seen on the bodies. The autopsies for each of the bodies also shows the wounds, that they, the injuries that they suffered. Uh, most of them bore gunshot and stab wounds, and PW said that these wounds were caused... This wound, uh, these gunshots and stab wounds caused the death of the deceased persons. Then we have experts who carried out phone and data analysis. PW19, Corporal Isaac Kiplelgo Ruto, is a liaison of SAT Safaricom. He liaises between Safaricom and security agencies. He was given by police officers conducting the investigations the various IMA for phones and SIM cards and serial numbers and required to provide the history of the incoming and outgoing calls from them as per the Safaricom database for the following six numbers. I have listed the six numbers here. The second request contained four numbers. I have also listed them in the judgment. He made the extracts and provided the details as follows. Phone number 0716475684. The registered name was Mohammed Abdi Abikar. This is the first accused person with ID number 24509649. The first accused person is using? Yes? He produced the code records for this number, which covered the period 1st of April to 4th of April. This detailed report shows all the call logs, site identifications, base stations, and from where the call was being transmitted. He also produced, produced what is called MSISDN history, which determines how many handsets the particular line or SIM card has been used in during the period. And for that period, the line had been used in four, in, in two, sorry, two forms. The second phone uh, line is 0721503666. This one was registered in the name of Mohammed Der Abdullahi. There is not much about this. The third one is uh, 0729342751. And subscriber details were that the line was registered in the name of Sahal Aden, the third accused person. And call data records were provided for the period 1st of April to 4th of April 2015. He said that no IMA or phone identity numbers for that line was available. However, there is no evidence as to how this SIM card was recovered and came to be among the exhibits. Remember, PW16, who arrested the third accused person, said he did not recover a mobile phone or SIM card from the third accused person. And nobody gave evidence that it was recovered at the scene. Number 0725-933732. This showed that the line was registered in the name of Khalid Hassan Ishak. 
It had been used in one phone. 0725-933614. Subscriber detail again was Khalid Hassan Isaac. It also showed that it had only been used in one handset. Zero seven two five nine double three nine ninety six. The registered subscriber was Aden M. Hu, and uh, the I may showed that it was used in only one phone. Zero seven two two eight nine. 4186, the registered subscriber was again Khalid Hassan Ishak. And it was also used in one phone only during the relevant period of 1st April to 4th April 2015. 0729-066200. This one was registered under Halima Ali. There was not much about that. 0714-007762. Mohammed Adan Suran. There was not much about that phone. 0716-678527. This one was registered in Osman Dagane, who was the fourth accused person. These were the 10 numbers that they were given to look at. Uh, he printed the documents from Safaricom database system. He then prepared a certificate and produced it in court. He explained that the call data record means call detail record, which is a file containing information about a report of activity of the system usage. And this one captures the activities uh, such as the SMS, the call duration, the call, the call duration, location of the caller, IMA of the caller, who is using the number is also identified. In cross-examination, PW19 said that he did not have the subscriber details for Hassan Eden Hassan, the second accused person. PW21, Weldon Siongok, is a senior manager, law enforcement and liaison from Safaricom. He came here to provide more evidence after PW20 had given PW19 had given his evidence. He provided call data records for various mobile phone numbers requested by police officers conducting the investigations. When he, while considering Exhibit 103A, he said that it was the registration details of number 0722894186 and the subscriber was listed as Khalid Hassan Isaac with national ID number 2776299898 and it also showed the call data details. He explained why So he produced a copy of a document he called subscriber history registration showing ownership and movement of the four numbers He showed that uh, on uh, uh, Khalid Isaac had been registered with phone number 0725-933732 between 31st of March 2015 and 28th of December 2015. That is the number that was appearing there. 0725-933614. This one also showed Khalid Isaac for the same period. And 0725-933996. For the period 23rd of March 2015 and 29th of December 2015, the register, the number appearing was, the name appearing was for Adan N. He explained the numbers. Uh, he explained that the numbers go through a cycle. If a number is not topped up, it goes into expiry uh, mode. Then it is sold off, and that is why one number will show various names. And before it is properly updated. It will show names of people who had ceased to use the phone a long time back. Now, PW22 is IP Christopher Mbwanga, who is a phone analyst at the Directorate of Criminal Investigations. 
He also does phone analysis of call data records and he carried out analysis of the phones and SIM cards recovered in this case using a tool known as I2 and prepared the reports. Now, PW9, as the investigating of said, and charged based on the phone and call data analysis of the phones and systems. Therefore, PW22, uh, uh, Inspector Christopher Mbwanga, analyzed these phones. I have set out the analysis that uh, Inspector Mbwanga says that he did. I'm going to skip that. Uh, I'm going to consider it in the determinations. So uh, we go to the acquittal of the fourth accused person on all the counts and the acquittal of the fifth accused person on being unlawfully present in Kenya. As had indicated, these were acquittals under no case to answer. At the close of the case for the prosecution, and having considered the evidence adduced and the submissions by landed counsels for the prosecution and the defense, the court determined that the prosecution had not made out a case sufficient to call upon the fourth accused person, Osman Abdidagane, to offer defense. The only evidence against him being that he was found at the scene of the attack a day after the incident, allegedly taking photographs of the scene. No evidence was adduced to support the allegation of taking photographs. The person who allegedly saw him taking the photos was not called as a witness, as PW9 only said that he was handed over to him. Secondly, when the mobile phones he was found with were subjected to forensic examination, there was no link to any form of communication with any of the four attackers who were killed by the security agencies or any of the other persons who may have been linked to the attack. Thirdly, the photos he was allegedly taking were also not produced in court as evidence, with PW9 only saying that the phones were still under analysis. The analysis never came to an end by the time the case, the case was closed. His senior at work, PW6, said that he did not see any problem with the fourth accused person being present at the scene of the crime. I therefore found that the fourth accused person, Osman Abdidagane, who was a watchman at the said University College, had no case to answer on any of the counts against him and he was consequently acquitted on all the counts under section 210 of the criminal procedure code. The fifth accused person was acquitted on count 156 of being unlawfully present in Kenya under section 210 of the criminal procedure code. Again, the uh, prosecution witnesses, none of them will, uh, gave evidence uh, indicating that the accused person was not Kenyan or Tanzanian other than saying that they did not find any identification upon him. The fifth accused person was not Kenyan and was Tanzanian. This court does not find that he is either Kenyan or Tanzanian, but the finding of this court is that that evidence that he was not a Kenyan was not adduced. The only person who mentioned... Uh, who mentioned the place where the fifth accused person came from uh, was PW4, who said that he had he heard him tell worshippers at the mosque that he was from Mombasa and his father was Adigo and his mother Akamba. Now, if you go by that evidence, which you cannot go by because it is hearsay, it will mean that he will be Kenyan, but again, you do not consider such to be evidence. None of the other prosecution witnesses gave evidence on where the fifth accused person comes from. He was therefore acquitted as I've indicated. Nimesema ya kwamba mushtakiwa watano aliweza kuachiliwa kwa sababu hakukuwa na ushahidi wote wa kuonyesha kwamba yeye hakukuwa mkenya. Ingawaje mahakama hii haipati kwamba yeye si mkenya wala ni mtanzania hayo hayakuwa ndiyo jukumu la koti. Jukumu la koti ilikuwa kutafuta kujua ikiwa yeye kuna ushahidi wa kuonyesha kwamba alikuwa humu mchini kinyume cha sheria. Kwa hivyo aliwachiliwa kwa shtaka la moja, hamsini na sita na kusema kwamba yeye alikuwa hapa nchini kinyume cha sheria. Now the rest of the accused persons were found to have a case to answer on all the counts facing them and were put to their respective defenses under section 211 of the criminal procedure code. Washtakiwa wengine wanne, washtakiwa wengine watatu pamoja na mshtakiwa watano waliweza kupatikana na kesi ya kujibu na wakahitajika kujitetea. Mushtakiwa wa pili, watatu na watano 
walichukua ile haki yao sorry the second third and fifth accused persons exercise their constitutional right to remain silent and not offer defense or call any witness translate that only the first accused person made a defense he did not call a witness now he denied that he he committed the offenses laid against him he denied that he knows any of the other accused persons he said that he was born and lives in mandera He was arrested on 2nd of April 2015 at Bandera aboard a bus and blindfolded and when the blindfolds were removed he was at the ATPU offices where he had been airlifted. He said that at the time of the arrest the officers recovered a bag with his clothes, money, a phone and an ID card. He said that he had left Mandera on 31st March 2015 to Garissa for a funeral of one Aliyo Gele Omar. And he left Garissa back to Mandera on 1st of April 2015. They spent the night on the way and arrived in Mandera on 2nd of April from where he was arrested. <coughs> he accepted that mobile phone number 0716475684 is his and that he was using it at the time of arrest. He denied that he knew Abdurrahman Mohamed Abdullahi, one of the terror attackers. who was named as the first attacker by the security agents <coughs> he sought to challenge the evidence that uh, of uh, he sought to challenge the evidence of the first attacker's phone number appearing on his a uh, call data record xbit 97 So he pointed out from the call data records the the instances when it is indicated that they communicated It is uh, he says that unlike all the other data it is only for his 